everyone. My name is Mackenzie Kane with the National Sports Media Association, joined by the 2024 Nebraska Sportscaster of the Year, Jason Jorgensen. Mr. Jorgensen, thank you so much for joining me today. You bet, Mackenzie. I'm uh, I'm glad to be here and uh, glad you reached out. Absolutely. Well, would you mind starting off with a brief introduction? Can you share what your current role is in sports broadcasting? Well, I've been the sports director here at KRVN in Lexington, Nebraska for the last 27 years. And then for the last seven years, I have been the uh, radio play-by-play guy for Division II Nebraska Kearney. That's a Division II school about 40 miles away. So that's that's kind of the crux of it. Well, this is your first time receiving this award, Nebraska Sportscaster of the Year. Can you just share what this accomplishment means to you? It it blew me away because in our state, and I'm sure it's that way, in a, especially in a lot of small states, usually this award only goes to the guys who do Division One or the major school in their uh, state. A lot of times our winner in Nebraska has been uh, whoever's been the play-by-play voice of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, or this award has been won by a lot of guys in Omaha and Lincoln. I'm three hours west of Omaha and Lincoln. So to to win this honor, uh, it just it, it blew me away when I found out that I was even being considered. And then to find out later on that I was the winner, I, I almost couldn't believe it. Well, I uh, I go to a Division three school myself, and I'm a part of their athletic communications program. So I, I know just how hard Division two and Division three schools work. Same like the big guys, same as the big guys. So uh, I I commend you for everything that you've done so far. But um, I'm curious, where did this passion for sports casting originate? Can you just walk me through uh, the moment you first knew that this was the industry you wanted to pursue? Probably like everybody and everybody I think who gets into this has a lot of the same stories. I was pretty young and uh, I was a kid. I was like anybody else back in the 80s, sitting in front of the TV Uh, yapping along to the game that was on. Uh, Fortunately, my family was uh, pretty understanding, and they sat there and they dealt with me as a kid trying to call games. Also, as a kid, uh, I would call our tech mobile games that we would play on Nintendo, and I would keep stats on on a yellow pad. So it goes back quite a ways. And then when I was in high school, uh, I had a teacher, his name was Mr. Kerr. He was our uh, weight training teacher, and he really encouraged me. He said, Jason, this is something I think you could be pretty good at. So got a little push from him, and uh, here I am some 30 years later. Well, can you uh, can you walk me through what a typical week looks like for you and how you go about preparing your stories? Well, the one thing that uh, I, I kind of feel like I have two full-time jobs where one, I am the sports director here at KRVN. I also have an air shift on KRVN from 10 until two, and I have five sports casts during the day. And then you have to take care of the website. And then I'm also in charge of scheduling all of our high school broadcasts. And I still do some of our high school broadcasts that we have across the region. Then on top of that, then there is a UNK stuff. And normally in a basketball season, our games would be Thursday night and Saturday afternoon if we're at home. When we're on the road, then I take off and I leave with the bus. I'm fortunate enough with the basketball teams, they allow me to travel with them on the bus. And then I'll normally be gone a Wednesday morning through. Most times we'll get home 1, 2 o'clock on a, on a Sunday morning. So that's that's an average week for basketball. Football, I don't have to deal with the Wednesday travel stuff, but uh, every other week we fluctuate. And our road trips are pretty extensive. Our our closest uh, school that we play is about two and a half hours away. I would say on average, we have about five, five and a half hours one way to uh, each football game. And how long have you been doing both of those uh, different jobs for? Well, I've been here at KRVN for 27 years and then uh, done the Loper stuff for seven. So in the last seven years, life has been a... a little busier with getting to do the college stuff, but that's always what I wanted to do. And that job opened up and I didn't have to move to move up to the college level. I was still able to work here at KRVN, still live in the same house. My house is basically halfway between the university and the radio station. So I'm about 20 miles either way. So it's been a pretty good fit. Well, in your 27 years at KRVN, do you have a favorite memory from your time so far? We had a high school team about 15, 16 years ago that got hot at the end of the year. Uh, Looked like they were going to fire the coach, that they went on the road. 
and they they won a game against a rival on a buzzer beater, and then that kind of kickstarted a late run, and those kids uh, eventually ended up in the state tournament. That was pretty cool. And doing the Lopers, about the second or third year in, I got to call a national championship match on the volleyball level. Then our women's basketball team has been to the NCAA tournament three or four times, and even our football team made a bowl game not that long ago. So I've been pretty blessed in the seven years that I've called the Lopers to have some good teams to call. Well, it's um, it's my understanding that uh, voice is sometimes one of the best indicators of detecting emotion. Um, so I'm curious, how do you balance informing the public and maintaining objectivity in your reporting without sounding like uh, you're picking favorites? You know, I, I guess that all kind of started from the beginning here with calling high school because you really can't be biased. And I've always tried to tell that to the younger guys who help us out. I've always went, went by, I'm professionally biased. You know that I am for the Lopers without me being a homer. Now I know others being a homer is their calling card. And there's probably fans that would just as soon I was a huge homer, but I, I I've never thought that was the way to go. And then on the high school side of things, we always have usually two teams from our area playing. So you really can't favor one or the other. And one of the big things that I have learned is, especially with the internet, world's a whole lot smaller than it used to be. Well, when I started in this, there was no listening online. So anybody anywhere can be listening to your broadcast. And I just assume whatever team they were on, they're able to listen and enjoy the broadcast, whether who they are for. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, well, I, you earned the title of Nebraska Sportscaster of the Year, and clearly you've got the buttery smooth vocals that this uh, this field requires, and it's so heavily audio-based. But can you um, elaborate a little bit more on the role being a strong writer and reporting uh, or being a good storyteller plays in your work? You know, I, I've always tried to, uh, I go and talk to our local college, the, the broadcast students every year. And that's one of the things I always bring up, that you have to be a writer. And, you know, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but when I, when I got into this, yes, you wrote your stories for the radio. But then once the internet came along, then we almost had to start writing more newspaper-like stories for our website. And I always tell the kids that is that is a lost art. If you can write, you can write your own ticket. And you need to be able to write anything. I mean, the the opening portion of your broadcast after the stinger hits and they come to you, that has to be that has to be written. If you have a local athlete who has accomplished something big, uh, you also have to write the story around that. I was fortunate I had a really good high school English teacher. And even back in, in the day, in the late 80s, he told me, he said, Jason, you're going to have to be able to write to do this. And, and at the time, uh, you know, maybe I didn't absorb that as much as I should have. But he, he, was, certainly, he was certainly right. And, and writing continues to be a, a lost skill. Well, I mean, you've been in the, this business for over a quarter century. So I'm curious, how would you say uh, sports radio reporting, this type of broadcast has evolved over the past couple of years? You know, in some ways it's easier than it used to be because there's so much information out there and so many stories or how much information you can find on Twitter or X. But when I got into it, it was, it was easier because at that time, all you worried about was radio. And now it seems like you've got to do radio, you've got to do website. We have video podcasts that we do here for some of the, the Nebraska Cornhusker stuff that we deal with. So I, I'm always kind of conflicted where, yes, there are good parts of it. But then, you know, when, when I got into this and I started working here at KRVN in the late 90s, when I got done with the broadcast, I was done. Now, when I get done with the broadcast, I've got to put the podcast of the game up. I've got to write a story and I've got to put all of that uh, on our website. And that, that just goes along with it. So it's, there, there's been some pluses and some minuses. Would you say that those are skills that you've had to learn along the way or that um, a certain part of your, your job uh, equipped you with these skills that you were then able to apply to different forms of media? 
had to learn it. You know, I'm I'm just about 50, and sometimes I feel like I'm the old dog, especially with all of the, the young kids that we have here. I mean, there was going through school when I was your age, it was just in the very infancy of uh, of the Internet, and people just barely had email at that <laughs> point. So, and then, you know, everything just kind of slowly uh, evolved. But I'm, I, I'm a big one about... Pod, podcasting games, especially the high school stuff, that local stuff is what draws the audience in and what boosts your website numbers. You know, I, I've learned over the, yes, it, it's great if we get a big interview with one of the Nebraska coaches, but if we have an interview on one of our local coaches who maybe is moving on or taking a job, uh, the local stuff, the local stuff will always win, even though it might not seem like that big of a deal if you weren't from the area, but I always try to stress that to the students that I talk to too, that uh, local is, is where it all starts. I love hearing that. That's, that's fantastic. Um, well, I, I hate to put you on the hot seat here, but I have, um, I have a question that um, um, frankly, I'll just ask it. Well, this uh, past season, the Nebraska men's basketball team went five and 22. So I'm curious, uh, what are some of the strategies? What are some of the tactics that you use as an announcer to uh, keep the live stream interesting when you have some of those blowout games? That That is an awesome question. And I'm always asked, how, how do you do that? <laughs> I guess everybody looks at this differently. I I still believe you have to worry about the game. And sometimes I joke, I'm like, you know what? I'm paid the same whether it's a blowout or it's a really good game. Now, certainly it's much more entertaining and easier to do uh, a tight game. I always say anybody can make a good game sound sound good. So uh, you you have to really line up on your background and you have to be fair and you have to always realize who your audience is, regardless of what you're doing. Your your audience is going to be moms and dads, aunts and uncles, grandma and grandpas, and uh, you know brothers and sisters. So I always try to stay kind. I I think one thing that helps me is yes, I played athletics in high school, but I was on a really bad basketball team, so I understand what it's like to be beaten. Also, I've been fortunate to uh, some of our teams, uh, the high school ones that we covered before I got into college, they were programs that struggled. So I, I guess I've had a lot of practice of doing blowouts. And to me, it's 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 just the game. You you gotta you gotta stick with the game, you gotta stick with your uh, your basics and uh, just just try to be positive. Because I think being negative doesn't do you any good. And you can't ride people and, and ride coaches, at least not in my, in my area. Now, if you were in the pros or in a bigger city, you know, you probably could be a, a little more critical, but that, that that's a good question that you asked me because I've had several people the last couple of years with our Nebraska Kearney basketball team struggling. And many times they've come up to me and they've said, thank you for remaining positive. So maybe, maybe that's the way to do it. I don't know. Well, I'm going back into uh, your 27 years in radio, are there um, any big misconceptions that you've noticed about this whole field of sports radio? Mm, it, or, I, uh, I don't know about misconceptions. I, I will say it, you know, I, re I read something this week, you know, the, the big story that's going on now with LSU coach Kim Mulkey, and, and she comes out in front of that article that's supposed to be coming out about her in the Washington Post. It, it does make me sad that, that people don't trust the media or they say they don't trust the media. And I guess I've never really run across somebody who I thought was out to do somebody harm. Uh, everybody's got their own different opinion one way or the other on, on what's right or wrong. But I, I guess I'm I guess I'm saddened that 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 there's a perception out there, you know, don't trust what you just read or, or what you heard. So to me, that, that, that bums me out a little bit. I, I think most people in their heart are good. Well, how about um, as someone who has had years of experience in this field, are there any big rookie mistakes you notice us youngings making when we first enter either the world of sports broadcast or radio specifically, um, just because we aren't familiar with uh, how to prepare? Well, I think a lot of times people fail to prepare. 
at least on, on the play-by-play point, I, I've seen a lot of young broadcasters not show up to the game when they maybe should have. I've seen people walk up, and, and this is at the high school level, you know, the kickoff's at 7 o'clock. They get there at 6.30. They're walking down on the field to get starting lineups from the coach at 6.45. To me, that should all be done ahead of time, and that, and that's something that I've always tried to do. Now, there are others who, who are okay with that, but that is one thing. Whenever I've had uh, young guys help us, because we have – Sometimes on a Friday night, we'll have three different high school football games going on at one time. And I always stress to the kids that you got to be prepared, email ahead of time, and uh, be prepared and know your stuff because the the time to go down to talk to the coach isn't 10 minutes before kickoff or uh, tip-off. Well, I guess uh, for my final question, I'd love to ask if you have any advice for aspiring young sports reporters and broadcasters like myself um, and others that might be listening. Um, what advice you'd like to give them? My advice would be, and, and I didn't learn this until I, uh, until I'd been in it a long time. I, I always thought that if, if I became really good at this, that someone would notice me and it doesn't work that way. You have to network. You have to know people. You've got to spread out there. I know it's an old saying and it's a cliche. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And really in broadcasting, and it's probably that way in any profession, but it's who you know. And I'm kind of out here in the middle of Nebraska, even though I work for a 50,000-watt AM radio station. I, I, I always thought, you know, oh, somebody will notice me. Somebody will notice. No, you've, you've, you've really got to. You got to push and you, and you got where you learn, you know, who's hiring, where the jobs are at and uh, that kind of thing. But it is uh, that the industry has changed so much in the 30 years that I have uh, been involved. It's, you know, there are more opportunities to do games, video streams and all of that. But then there are less jobs now. There's a lot of radio stations. Um, well, you've seen how newspapers have shrunk. There's not the. There's, there's not the news, there's not the jobs in the newspaper business that there once were, and there certainly are not the jobs in the radio business that they once were. But uh, that, that would be my advice. Meet everybody you can and remember names and network and network and network. Well, Mr. Jorgensen, thank you so much for sitting down with me and speaking with, speaking with me today. And congratulations again on the accomplishment, Nebraska Sportscaster of the Year 2024. Thank you, uh, Mackenzie. It's still when I hear that, it it's I don't it doesn't seem like it's real, but uh, I'm very excited and very humbled that I won. Thank you.